This is the Nokia 7.1, the successor to the Nokia 7, and proof that there is such a thing as great design and a great software approach in the mid-range. Fun fact, Michael Fisher recently showed off my first ever cell phone in a video of his. So that explains why I have a soft spot for Nokia making such a tremendous comeback. I'm Jaime Rivera with Pocket Now, and let's talk about why you should care too. seen a trend of premium mid-rangers that all look great at a glance but watered down a few important elements to keep the price down. The Nokia 7.1 is actually the exception to some of these, so let me start by telling you what I love about this phone. Back in our briefing, Nokia told us that their primary focus was design, performance, and pure Google. And first off, they did get the design part right. It's not such a large phone, being just slightly taller than the iPhone XS. The CNC machine chamfers on the aluminum make this midnight blue variant quite the looker, and the 2.5D glass on the top and the bottom make it pleasant to hold. The second thing I like is this display. Usually mid-rangers do not get this part right, but the Nokia 7.1 provides a very beautiful and vibrant experience. At 5.8 inches diagonal, Nokia's pure display brings full HD Plus resolution, HDR support, and is actually capable of converting content to HDR with great color and saturation. This is definitely one of the highlights of this phone, probably one of the things that I enjoy the most. Third, the whole concept of pure Google is just flat out great. For those of you looking for the full Android Pie Google Pixel experience on a budget, this is the way to go, look no further. This is actually my first experience using Android One and it is seriously fascinating. This phone mimics the Pixel experience in absolutely every animation, but with the added bonus that if you don't like the Pixel Pill, you can actually switch it off. From its integration to Google services to the cool selection of wallpapers, I think one of the highlights of buying a Nokia phone is that they're not trying to reinvent software here. But of course, there's no such thing as a perfect phone, so let me begin telling you what I'm mixed about when it comes to this device, and it starts with the internals. Sure, I know, this is a mid-ranger, but at the time of the Poco phone, that's actually kind of a hard argument to defend. We have a Qualcomm Snapdragon 636 processor, options for 3 or 4 gigs of RAM, depending on your choice of 32 or 64 gigs of storage respectively, and with support for microSD expansion up to 400 gigs. There's a 3060 milliamp hour battery with quick charge capabilities through USB-C, and the company uses special tuning on its display to adapt and push endurance, according to them. So sure, this phone doesn't include the best specifications for a mid-ranger, but uh, the reason why I'm mixed is because once you start using it, I don't think you'll actually care about that. Like for example, animations are fluid, gliding through menus works fine, performance being another key pillar for Nokia, this phone does not feel like a mid-ranger. I don't even have complaints about battery life, that also works just fine. And the cherry topper is that you even have a headphone jack here, so even that's great. And then other things I'm mixed about are things like the speaker, which is loud, but sounds a lot better if you assist it with your hand. And then in the case of the display, the whole notch and large chin just really hinder all the great quality brought by the panel. Now, believe it or not, I don't really have anything that I would say that I don't like about this phone, but there are cases when it comes to its camera where I do feel that it needs improvements. Sure, mid-rangers never really get this right, but in the case of a phone that offers Carl Zeiss optics and its dual camera system, I was actually expecting a little more. We have one sensor of 12 megapixels, f1.8 aperture, and 1.28 microns, and with a secondary 5 megapixel camera that provides depth sensing for portraits. The selfie camera is of 8 megapixels with f2 aperture. Photos are, well, they're good during the day as expected with all smartphones. Colors seem great with good saturation and detail is good with neat tricks like phase detection autofocus and HDR, which is hard to find for mid-rangers. The problem really is low light photos where this camera doesn't do the best job in handling grain, even at such a bright aperture. I was really expecting more given the spec sheet and Nokia's legacy, but low light is definitely something that needs work. Portrait photos are the opposite though. They're surprisingly good with great color detail and without any sort of overbearing or fake looking bokeh. Though the experience is not the same with portrait selfies, even if regular selfies are fine. 
And then when it comes to video, I will praise Nokia for including some nice stabilization and some very good dynamic range, though you will notice it gets quite warpy whenever you're in dim situations. This stabilization and dynamic range also makes it to selfie video along with a very nice crop, which I'm honestly surprised because that's even hard to find on flagships today. To conclude, I have to say that I walked into this review not expecting much, which is usually the case with mid-rangers, but I'm actually leaving with a smile. Where has Nokia been all these years? I would say planning one of the smartest comebacks in history. The Nokia 7.1 has great hardware, good performance, and the purest of Google, which is seriously the way that I feel most, if not all, smartphone OEMs should go. Sure, it's not perfect, and the mid-range is rather crowded with some awesome devices like the Honor 8X or the Poco phone. Thing is, in my opinion, Nokia's choice to go Android 1 gives it a significant benefit over its competition. It seriously offers a less dramatic experience for you, the end user. I'm actually really glad that I spent some time with the Nokia 7.1. It's always great to see one of your favorite companies reinvent itself. I definitely do recommend this phone. For those of you on a budget, I do feel that you're getting more than your money's worth here. What about you? Let us know what you think about the Nokia 7.1 in the comments. And while you're at it, make sure you follow us on social media. Subscribe to both our channels, English and Spanish, for more videos like this one. You can follow me on Twitter, Jaime underscore Rivera, or on Instagram at Jaime Rivera. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I'm Jaime Rivera. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.